The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. I'm CJ. And I'm Carlos. And as CJ says once in a while, it's time for some uh, housekeeping. Yes. <laughs> We're going to start some housekeeping real quick with uh, an announcement on Monday at 6 p.m. here on FRC Media. We're going to have live from the North Pole. Santa Claus is going to pay us a visit here in uh, Fall River. And... Uh, I'm truly hoping that the children will enjoy it. We'll have uh, a great time with Santa. We'll have some stories read. And uh, we will uh, be able to uh, spend a great deal of time experiencing what will hopefully be a great day uh, or a great evening for the children at home and for some that are present here. And here's what we'll be looking at. We're already starting to put together the, the set. And uh, Santa will hopefully uh, enjoy it. Um, I asked if we can get some reindeer here, so we're going to see if we can get some of that. <laughs> but it, it should be a fun time, and uh, I'd like everyone to join us here on FRC Media Monday, 6 p.m., and the show will be live. So please, be sure to join us, because we want to see you, that's for sure. So I guess that's it, Chip. <laughs> well, now it's my turn. It's your turn. It's my turn. Uh, it seems as though I have a, a real big fan you know, uh, a while back, uh, Mr. Renzi, candidate for mayor, uh, tried to imply things that I said, and uh, I commented on it. And after the first mayoral debate, he came up and extended his hand and apologized if it was any misinterpretation. So it's obvious that uh, Mr. Renzi is not, uh, was disingenuous when he offered that apology because he wanted to make things personal, and he has. I don't do Facebook, so I'll do it now. He talks about me backpedaling on my mayoral choice. He refers to me as Mr. Magoo because I squint. Well, these lights are very bright, and I'm sitting right under them. So I don't care. You can, the fact is, another you know, comedy made, uh, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm backpedaling. You know, I'm not backpedaling. If you look at some of our previous shows before the election, I said, regardless of who becomes mayor, and even if my choice became mayor, if they didn't do what was right, we would be on them. I don't believe some of the choices that Jaisal Correa has made were right wouldn't be the first time that my pick wasn't the best pick, but I think it was the best pick of the bunch. I don't think we could have stood another full term of Sam Sutter, but I sure know one thing. We couldn't stand even one minute of Richard Renzi, because the fact is, Mr. Renzi, if you want to stalk me, stalk me, because you'll see what happens. Because the fact is, you got less than 2% of the votes. You got 200 plus votes out of 15,000 or so that were, that were cast. So you got less than 2%. So 98% of the people agree with me. And I didn't do this to you. you you're going to make this personal, and now it's not, now it's personal. There'll be no more apologies. You want to start name calling like a like a third grade girl and call people names? Well, you can make fun of Albert Einstein's hair or you can make fun of Gandhi and call him a, an anorexic and stuff. But listen to what people say. You obviously are not a good candidate. I knew that from the first time you ran for office. 
but I have always gone on record. There's no backpedaling. If, if Jaisal Correa doesn't do the right thing, we will do what we have to do on his show and call a spade a spade. Unlike you, who ran for mayor twice, and then after you lost dismally and didn't get, I don't know who voted for you, maybe your, your, your immediate family and some people you paid, but you got less than 2%. But the fact is, you turned around and endorsed the incumbent that you ran against. So who backpedaled? As a matter of fact, after you, uh, you went to Will Flanagan looking for a job after you ran. You don't think we know this? But we don't get personal. We judged you on the fact that you were a bumbling, stuttering idiot at the debate. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to condemn your candidacy. You condemned your candidacy by opening your mouth. You looked like a fool up there. People were laughing at you because you can't put a sentence together. You didn't even know what the question was. You had to turn to one of the other people on the panel and ask them what the question was. And you want to run for mayor? It wasn't personal with me. I don't think you're, you're capable of doing the job. I don't think you're capable of representing the people of Fall River. And I'm not going to give you any more airtime because I made that decision based purely on the job. It wasn't personal. I had nothing against you. But apparently you got something against me. So now I got something against you and it is personal. And the next time we, we see each other, we're not going to shake hands. And that's all I've got to say on that clown. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's interesting because prior to the show, I, I had a, a conversation with a very knowledgeable individual here. Um, no, it wasn't Carlos. <laughs> Matter of fact, Carlos went looking for me. And we talked about some of the things and, you know, historically what we've been looking at here in Fall River and some of the problems we've been having. And, you know, let's look back real quickly on our, our history because we do have some issues we've got to discuss. Um, you know... Bob, back when Bob Correa and Will Flanagan and I believe Richard Renzi's first run ran for office, um, you know, everyone voted Bob out because they wanted new blood. They wanted new vision. And Will came in and built up that whole thing. And I know I, I, I was part of that. And I, and I saw that. Um, but the people of Fall River didn't learn. Okay, that the new vision and the, and the new way and, you know, the young blood um, didn't produce anything. And it wasn't the best administration going. And we're back to doing that again. We, you know, they, they got rid of Will. They put in somebody who, again, didn't do anything for the city. Then we put in Jaisal now, who hasn't done anything yet, but they're already lining up. You know, the Herald's lined up. They put the crosses up outside of City Hall, um, you know, you got articles coming out, you know, pro campaign promises are made to be broken. Uh, you even have city councilors and city council elects doing this. They're forming their little cliques. The political clique in Fall River, it's something that always happens. But, you know, the problems in Fall River didn't start with Bob Correa. They didn't start with Will Flanagan. These problems go back to the Lambert administration. And Eddie got out of Dodge when he saw Dodge was done, okay? And you have people who have been through this entire wreck the entire time, and they're still in place, like Ken Fiola. All right? At one time, we had a thriving industry with outlet stores. They all left Fall River. They went to rent them. Why couldn't Fall River have said, hey, you know what? We're going to take this parcel of land here, and we're going to make this an outlet center. And we're going to build a place like Rentham now has right there. That would have kept an influx of people coming in just to go to the outlets. Rentham's in the middle of nowhere. And they've got people going there at daily. I mean, and during the holiday season, you wait in line to get into the parking lot. You wait in line to get off the highway. So, again, nobody saw this. Nobody could put this together. Nobody could say, hey, you know, we have something that's good here. It's bringing in seniors. It's bringing in tourists. It's bringing people in to shop. But look at where they're shopping. They're shopping in these mills that look dilapidated and disgusting. Let's try to put something together so we can make it a place like Rentham before Rentham came into existence. We well, didn't do that. But Eddie was smart. He knew. And why 
Did people keep electing Eddie for 12 years? He was the feel-good mayor. He was the Mac the Knife mayor. No matter what happened, no matter what was going wrong, Eddie would sing a song, do a dance, and everybody was happy. But the people of Fall River forget these things. And well, we've got to stop that. Well, we've got to stop look, looking forward. And we've got to start working forward to make things happen. Well, but, hey. Not, look, you, we, we've got to do what we've done, which is get the people out who won't do the job. Because, look, nobody, nobody is infallible. You know? We get condemned by my choice. Well, my choice, I feel, is the best choice. And, I, and it was the best choice in that field. Would have been the best choice if there were a few other candidates? Maybe not. But that's all you can do. I don't believe in not picking and not being involved in an election. I don't believe in abstaining and not voting. My philosophy is you've got to pick somebody, even if it is the lesser of two evils. And that's not the first time. It's not the first time people have not lived up to their expectations. We, I supported Ed Lambert the first time he ran for mayor because Ed Lambert had been on the school committee, he had been a state rep with a virtually 100% voting record for the city of Fall River and, and public safety. Then he got into office, and after his first term, he became the Eddie Lambert that uh, was taking care, of Ed, ca taking care of Eddie Lambert. So what did we do? We called him out on it. And he was my choice in the first election as was Will Flanagan the first time he ran. Bob Correa won his seat as mayor because people thought he had 30 years of experience as a state rep, and he'd done a pretty good job as a state rep. So based on what they had to, to judge candidates, they judged him as the best candidate. And that's all you can do. As, as it's all as humanly possible Nobody, unfortunately, has a crystal ball. We can't look in the future. I mean, we couldn't look in the future. All you can do is hold us accountable for holding them accountable. If we give Jaisal a pass, then you can talk to me. Don't tell me I'm backpedaling. I'm not backpedaling. We've already called them out. We've already called them out on this thing. And if you look at a previous show before the election, I said that if he doesn't do his job, I'll be the first one to call him out. Am I happy with this? No. Am I happy that he picked Joe Macy to stay on? No. I'm not, look, and there's a great example. There's nothing personal between me and Joe Macy. As a matter of fact, I get along pretty well with Joe Macy. But the fact is, I don't believe you have a $92,000 a year job. Even if he worked full time, I'll go on record. Joe Macy's got a good enough pension. Give somebody a job that needs a job. Not somebody who's already got a pension around $100,000. I've said it numerous times on this show. I'm tired of politicians like... Joan Menard leaving the Senate and coming here and making 120 grand and bumping up their pension and working in their 70s while people are out there trying to get a job. You know, politicians stay on a dole, but you can't, don't be, don't be calling us and saying that we're backpedaling and we're not calling it. When I, when I don't call somebody on something, then you can, then you can talk. Because the fact is, you can only pick <laughs> what, who you feel is the best candidate. That's all you can do. And then after that, you hold them accountable, as our Constitution says they should be. And I think we're on the right track in Fall River. We changed mayors. We weren't happy with Sutter. You, he had a record. And we, I judged that record and said, look, he's going in the wrong direction. He's raising taxes. He's not cutting government. So let's see what Jaisal Correa does. Jaisal Correa really, really, as far as I'm concerned, made a major blunder in, in how, he, how he formulated his advisory committee. As a matter of fact, I've gone on record and said, I don't even believe he should have that. You should, as the mayor, you should meet with department heads, look at them, and then you can call in various experts. I said that on the last show. But the fact is, do I agree with what he did? No. But let's face it, 
as I said on the last show, he hasn't raised his hand and taken the oath of office yet. We don't know what he's going to do as the mayor. Yeah, he's got some advisors that we feel are less than the best. But when push comes to shove, he is the mayor. He will make the decisions. He will guide the city. He will determine how, what direction we go, as I said on the last show. And we need strong and decisive decisions. This city is in trouble financially and politically. Well, so we'll hold him accountable. But the fact is, everybody is, you know, it's not backpedaling. Yeah, you know, we, I disagree with these appointments, but the fact is, when he begins to make policy decisions that are adverse, if I don't get out the nails, <laughs> then you talk to me. Because, you know, I may be Mr. Magoo because of these lights, but uh, Renzi's the scarecrow because he only <laughs> needs a brain. Yeah, well, understand something, Mr. Magloo. Mr. Magloo, Mr. Magloo. <laughs> well, I think that may be, Mrs. Magoo may be insulted that he compared me to Mr. Magoo. Yeah, there you so, go. But, you know, in regards to what you had said, I, I have to say something, you know, about the, the, this advisory committee. Because when I made a comment um, to the future special assistant to uh, the mayor-elect, uh, soon to be mayor, he... And I said, you know, I'm really not thrilled with these people. And we've said it on the show. He turned around and he says, what's wrong? You're upset because you're not on the committee? I wouldn't have taken a position on that committee. You know, he doesn't understand that. I've served on transition committees before. They do nothing. They do nothing. Okay? And they just spew what the chairman or what the chairman of the entire committee wants to hear. And the chairman co-chairs of this committee have already said there'll be no written report. So what's the sense? We've spoken about it before. It's political, it's mending fences, and it's pay back to friends. That's all that is. So I think that's about enough. Carlos is over there going, I haven't said anything. No, that's, no, that's okay. I mean, I think my job is to comment. So that, that's the title you give me for the show. Is that's right, comment. guest commentator. So uh, I have a couple of comments that I, uh, that I have to make. Um, I missed good shows before. I was not here, and I would like to comment in a couple of, couple of them. Um, the comment, well, building, um, apartments. I'm very happy that happening. I'm very happy they're going to have marble uh, corner tops, uh, that they're going to fit queen beds. I'm happy for all of that. The question I keep putting is, and I did ask that, before the TIFFs went out, uh, approved by the city councils, and I question, is parking. And uh, on the reveal there, what we saw was the, fro the, the fr floor plans for the apartments. I counted myself around 240 parking spaces on that building. And I'm just going to mention three companies that are using that parking spaces. Jerry Remis, Harbor Counseling, and BCC. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to comment all the rest of the space, that it, yeah, headdresses and, and, and more and more. If all those three companies bring people at the same time, at the same day, it's not enough parking spaces for everybody. Matter of fact, some days, you have to go around and around and around to fund somebody to leave so you can fund the parking space. Now you're going to add 114 apartments, 111 apartments, something like that. I'm going to put one car per apartment. You're adding another 120 cars into that parking space. Where is the plan? I want to see the plan parking for that building and for those apartments. Or they're probably having the solution because the bio park has a brand new park, parking, uh, parking lot. Maybe they're going to uh, you know, use that parking lot, the city parking lot, to, to, to put the, 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 the people parking for this, for this building. That's I've been questioning about. Nobody showed me the, the, give me the answer. Nobody showed me the plans. I want to see it. What's very interesting, though, Carlos, is that the city requires for any new construction a minimum of two parking spaces 
for a single family home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're already going to ask, gonna blow up, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going to ask for that, why didn't they ask for two spaces for each apartment in this building? Yes. Okay, and then you've got the pink bean not going going into that building, mm -hmm. and a new software company mm -hmm. called Imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay, which by the way is connected it's, it's, one way or another to it's, other people. It's a, it's a concern. Should be a concern for the city that we are approving. Uh, tiffs and, and we're giving people, you know, and, and believe me, I want people because you're going to have people with money to, to be able to rent those apartments. Supposedly. Exactly. I want that people to rent those apartments. But, also but I remember, cannot forget that they need to park somewhere. Right. But also remember that that whole project was lobbied for very heavily by your mayor elect. Mm -hmm. He, when he was a city councilor, he lobbied for that. Even after I went to him with the federal reports and the state reports showing that market rate housing is not a sustainable item for Fall River at this point in time, mm -hmm. and that parking was an issue and these other things, oh no, we're, I'm all for this, it will not become a Point Gloria. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't, but when you don't have parking, it might very well do that. Um, yeah, that's my concern. The second show that I missed was about Mick Mayo Brown contract. Wow. That, I, I feel sorry that I, I was not here with you guys for that, <laughs> for that one, because I'm going to tell you, um, just like just like fit the numbers for the budget, I think that's what Mayor, Mick Mayo Brown's doing, is faking numbers with the state so she could get the funds that she needs to run the schools and to get paid $180,000 a year. Yeah, but, and, and she already had everyone from Barnstable down here walking around our schools saying, oh! Look at the wonderful job she's and, doing. And 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 what I, uh, you, you know what I comparing, I'm comparing uh, the differences between Chief Rosine and Mick Mayo Brown. If Chief Rosine gets at work in the morning and say, I don't care what you guys do, I don't want nobody getting arrested, I don't want to be on the paper tomorrow, do your job, uh, you know, move uh, move you uh, away. You look. I don't want to report. I want make sure that it's nobody's getting arrested in Fall River tomorrow. I think that's the way she's running, so she could so she could justify, okay, the numbers that she's coming up with. And and uh, and, and another thing is. Um, because if, if definitely she was running a good school department, we will not hear from the kids themselves saying that the teachers are looking other way when they're having a problem and when they come to them for help. So that's a perfect example coming from, from the kids' mouth uh, uh, doing that, uh, that form that, you know, you want to be a teacher in this city, you're going to have to... You don't see anything, you don't say anything, and do your job as a teacher. That's the only thing I want you to do. That's, to me, how she's running the school department. And that's why I don't uh, agree with her uh, contract being, uh, uh, you know, renewed. And that's my two comments. Very, uh, good, very good comments, Carlos. But the parking... I think there's a fire under his seat. But the park... <laughs> yeah, no, but... No, know, my phone already no, no, I, no, I think you're, no, I, I think you're right about... You know, we, we've, we've gone on record as opposition with Meg Mayo Brown. And, and the fact is that your, your point on the parking spots is, is a absolutely true. But, again, this is, a, it, this is a, an indication of how Fall River operates. They, they, you know, they, they talk about how great this housing is going to be. And, to, and then you look below the surface and you investigate and you find out these problems. But then we get back to Fall River. Who owns the buildings? Who own, who's doing the apartments? Right. And, and the same people who got a road done immediately. Before the windows. Be, before the windows. Got, yeah, before the, window, the building. before the windows, they had the road put in. And, and now nobody's going to worry about parking spots until all of a sudden... Because, you know, I'm going to make a bold prediction here. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they're not going to need a lot of parking spots for a while unless they start importing everybody from Connecticut and stuff. And they, and Lynn. They go, Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, Lynn, yeah, from <laughs> Lynn. And, and, you know, you were right. You're right about both things. And, and the thing is, they're not going to care. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be like, the, it's, it's going to be like Point Gloria. You're going to find out they're not going to get a rent a lot of units. And then ultimately, they're going to transfer them over to low-income housing. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have a, a car problem. Mm -hmm. And then they'll worry about it. And that's the way we do business. And, 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 and you know, and, but that's the government. And it segues me to something i got to get to because it really upset me. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, the, the, the electric 
the electric. You know, this is your government, people. This is your government. I got my card for the, for the electric rates, the aggregate rates, and I opened it up, and there I was, and it says, you're automatically put in. You have to opt out. And I'll tell you, that really bothered me. That really bothered me because, you know, who the hell is the state government to pass a law that makes it legal for them to, to make, to put us into an electric pool? And I understand the motivation for it, but that's not the way it's done. That's my house. And if you're going to come and you want me to get into an, to a different company, you come and solicit me to get into that company. I should have to opt in. It's my choice. You don't unilaterally take everybody in the city of Fall River and put them in a, in a, in a company that they didn't choose and, and make it legal. Make it legal. So that's that. That really aggravates me. So. Well, I find it interesting because uh, that's Mass General Law, Chapter 164, Section 134, by the way. But under Section A, which is the first section of the law, um, towards the end of the paragraph, it says, Participation by any retail customer in a municipal or group aggregation program shall be voluntary. Which I thought was very funny because while it's voluntary, within 30 days of the date of aggregation, entity is fully operational each Ratepayer shall be transferred to the aggregation entity according to an opt-out provision contained herein, which is it shall be the duty of the aggregated entity to fully inform participating ratepayers in advance of automatically enrolling that they are to be automatically enrolled and that they have the right to opt out. Well, guess what? I still haven't received my packet in the mail, and they went out on the 28th. I think they sent mine via snail. Okay. <laughs> and not only that, how many people, CJ, how many people are going to look at that and, and not even read it? Exactly. They're going to go, well, I'm, I don't want I want to keep National Grid. Right. And they're going to throw the thing in the barrel, and there's a card in there that you have to send in in order to keep your National Grid. I mean, they make it virtually, you know, it's like when hospitals send out bills that they they shouldn't send try to balance bill right if they get if they collect on 25 percent it's new profit the fact is that this is wrong this is government again this is like big brother i mean you know i thought there was a you know supposedly and they they that's what i hate about boston they, they pass laws to justify the you know the fact that they're taking Your state representatives yeah that they're, they're taking away our rights because you know i thought it was it, once they implemented two and a half many years ago, they, they said that any time a state mandates anything, they have to pay. Yeah, well, if it's a what? mandate from the state, they have to fund it. Well, this this is a this is a pseudo mandate. Right. And and you know the fact is when when things when I when I read things like this, it makes me crazy. It's like you know the government has decided to tell me what electric company I have unless I tell them, have to remind them. Why should I have to remind them? It's my electric bill. It's my house. I shouldn't, I should, you know, I should be able to say, I have my electric company until I choose not to have my electric company. That's right. Company. Well, you know, what's really interesting is the fact that the company that's going to actually be the provider is a company called Good Energy. And, but the actual provider is Con Ed, the New York electric company. Hey, it's always something interesting in Fall River. And I couldn't even get to that lovely dinner that the five new city councilors had at the Cove. That'll be well, Monday. That's going to have to be. We're running behind schedule. Hey, have a great weekend. And remember, Monday, 6 p.m., Channel 95, live from the North Pole. Get to see Santa Claus. Have a great weekend. And remember, stick it right up their backside if they screw you. Stay angry. Bah humbug.